are you on edge about Iran right now? Do you think they're actually going to pull that trigger? I wouldn't call it on edge. I'd call it vigilant. Um, I'm of the Harry, Dirty Harry school. And I know, you know, if, you're, if you can call me Harry Hopkins, I can make a reference to Dirty Harry. Yes. All right. What did Clint Eastwood say? Go ahead. Pull the trigger. Make my day. Make our day. Make my day. The Dirty Harry school. And uh, I've long been a, a member, uh, an adherent of that school. And uh, I think uh, I think the Iranians are aware of that. Listen, they never they never retaliated for Qasem Soleimani. Uh, they haven't retaliated against Israel proper. What I think we have to be very vigilant about is the possibility of Iranian attacks against Jewish communities and Israeli diplomatic posts around the world. I think there the alert has to be especially high. Well, I want to I want to add a uh, a note to your. They didn't retaliate about Soleimani. My son was at Al Assad when they fired the ballistic missiles from Iran at Al Assad. But someone gave us an hour's notice, and so I wonder if they do that yeah. kind of thing and your embassies. But uh, uh, Khamenei no. yesterday at the Eid celebration said it's coming. So do you believe him? Yeah. The question is, you know, to sound vaguely Clintonian, depends what it is. And uh, it could be a drone strike, uh, perhaps at, uh, at, a, at an Israeli settlement in Judea and Samaria, something up in the Golan Heights. Um, or, as I said before, it could be um, an attack against the Jewish community abroad. That's what they've done in the past. Uh, they've, already, they've, already, they've already attacked Israeli uh, tourists abroad. Um, there aren't that many tourists abroad right now because of the situation. So, Dr. Orrin, yesterday, uh, Commentary Magazine taped a, a, an hour-long John Podhortz, Abe Greenwald, Ma, uh, Seth Mandel, and Matt Continetti, and they reviewed the incoherence of Team Biden's view on Israel and how they react every day to a different news cycle, and they're not even commenting on the Death to America chance in, De, in Dearborn. What is, in your opinion, the Biden policy on the Israel war in Gaza? To get through it, but be, uh, unscathed before November. I think they want to maintain a level of, uh, of military supplies, um, a certain amount of diplomatic support, a certain amount, so they can say to um, you know, pro-Israel voters, uh, Democratic voters, look, you know, we had criticism, but we've maintained these fundamental pro uh, policies. To their, you know, the progressive voters, people from Dearborn, Michigan, are going to say, you know, look, we didn't put up with this, and uh, and we condemned it very harshly. And, uh, you know, there are two voices there. If you listen to John Kirby at the, the NSC, and if you listen to uh, Matt Miller at the State Department, you think you're talking about two different administrations. And sometimes you get very different messages even from the Secretary of State. Uh, they're trying to walk a very, very fine line, and the line is getting thinner. Uh, Dr. Oren, it's not coherent. I mean, I don't really know what they will do if, uh, I, not if, when Israel goes into Rafah, which I believe it has to do or the government will fall. Am I right about that, by the way? If they just say, oh, we're done here and Rafah's uh, fine. You're half right. You're half right. You're half right. We're going to go into Rafah not because the government's going to, going to fall. We're going to go into Rafah because this is what the people of Israel want and demand. And those soldiers, the hundreds of thousands of soldiers who have fought and bled in Gaza for the last six months is what they want. It's what I want. I think it's what my family wants. Uh, and, you know, there's this big... I mentioned this before on the program, this misconception in the United States is somehow the prime minister of the state of Israel is also the commander in chief like the president is. He is not. Uh, war making and war decisions are much more cons uh, consensual here. Um, my hope, my personal hope, is not that I'm not without criticism. I think that we should be flooding, flooding the Gaza Strip with humanitarian aid uh, and military support, even building uh, aid stations within Gaza and mobile hospitals in Gaza. We know how to do this. We've been doing it all over the world for rescue relief. Um, I think we, we should engage uh, with the Biden administration on issues which we formerly weren't willing to engage, what they call a pathway to a Palestinian state. It's just a pathway. It doesn't ob obligate us in any way. We're on the morning after scenario. We can do that. But we, ha we can't, I think, Hugh, we can't say no all the time. And we have to stick our heels and dig our heels in on those issues on which we cannot, cannot concede. And one of them is eliminating Hamas in Gaza. And that we right. must do. Uh, your friend, and it will be a guest soon, Yossi Klein Halevi, said on a podcast recently, this is not Netanyahu's war. This is Israel's war. I don't believe they've yes. internalized that at the White House or they choose not to project it because of political reasons. Do you agree? We have one minute to break and then we'll come back. 
Yes, yes, and no. I think political reasons, yes, because Netanyahu is the, the gift that keeps giving. You, 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 can, you can beat up on Netanyahu. If Netanyahu's not there, you're going to have to beat up on Israel, and that's not a very politically uh, savory prospect. Um, mm. uh, on the other hand, my context of administration, I've come to believe that they actually do think this is Bibi's war, and I, therein lies a lot of miscalculation. Oh, so much miscalculation. Don't go anywhere. Dr. Oren will be back after the break. I will play it later in the show. I will put it in the podcast today. I'm going to ask him about Ben Gavir and Smotrich, because honestly, the more people talk about this in America, the more they reveal that they don't know anything about Israeli politics and they're talking. I don't talk about it because I really don't know much about Israeli politics. Indecipherable to me. I know American politics. Dr. Warren, I've listened to enough Israeli media and I've listened to Haviv and to you and to uh, Yossi and a bunch of other people. I, I now know about Ben Gavir and Smotrich and how they are analogous in the United States to the far right wing of the Republican Party or the far left wing of the Democratic Party, but they're in the government. Should they at all figure in our calculation of what Israel's policy is? Because when they beat up on them, they're just picking the marginal figure in American in Israeli politics and making it the face of Israeli politics. It's not how we do it here. Okay, so again, I, I, I feel like I'm repeating myself. The answer to both those questions is yes. <laughs> what does it mean? You know, yes, they are peripheral figures. They represent important constituencies for this government. Um, and while they do not make the big decisions, and they're saying now they're going to leave the government if uh, the army doesn't go into Rafah, they're going to leave the government uh, if uh, Israel agrees to a certain hostage uh, for ceasefire deal. Uh, they're always threatening to leave the government. And one day they actually may make good on it because they're young and they could run again. And some of the popularity of Ben Gvir has gone up very high during this war, much, much, much less so. Um, but they don't make the big decisions, and that's the fact. They 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 affect a, a gravitational pull on the government, pulling it rightward. So it'll be difficult. You know, I know I think that Netanyahu wants to strike a deal with the United States, a grand bargain, in return for maybe not going into Rafah, in return for control over the Philadelphia route. That's the line dividing Gaza from Sinai. That's the route to which all these armaments were smuggled. In return for that. Uh, in return for, the, for, for releasing those hostages who are alive, and today Hamas is saying they don't even know who's alive. That's no big surprise. Uh, and in return for peace with Saudi Arabia, all right, that will put this all together in one big package. And, you know, <laughs> Netanyahu and Biden and maybe MBS will get Nobel Prizes. I don't know. But it's certainly Ben Gvir and Smoochers are going to oppose this. They're going to oppose it on multiple levels. They're going to oppose it on the failure to enter uh, into Rafah, they're going to close it on the release of hostages, the release of prisoners in Israeli jails for these hostages, the ceasefire. They'll oppose it. The question is, will they leave the government? Um, and if they do leave a government, will other parties like your Lapid's party, will they come up and take their place? I just a, a historical mo a moment of caution is this. Back in 1987, in the Y Plantation uh, negotiations with Bill Clinton and Yasser Arafat, right? Um, you know, yeah, that was the last agreement signed between Israel and the PLO was 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 uh, was Netanyahu and Arafat, believe it or not. Um, the Americans assured Bibi that uh, if he made that concession in Hebron to Arafat, that the Israeli left would step up and back him if the Israeli uh, right bolted. The Israeli right bolted and the Israeli left didn't support Netanyahu and he fell. Uh, so there's the there's the Y plantation scar, which remains, I think, probably uh, deeply embedded in Bibi's consciousness. All right, so I want to close with this. Um, I read a story this morning about the impact on Israel of an entire age cohort fighting the longest war in Israel's history. You wrote 2048 before the war began about Israel at 100. It's right. at 75 right now, 76, I guess, soon. Uh, how will this change Israel to have this many soldiers and their families, friends, and loved ones watch them? 262 have been killed. 600 total, including the massacre victims on 10-7. On How's it going to change Israel, do you think, Dr. Ryan? Profoundly. There will be a greater impact than the, uh, the mass immigration from the former Soviet Union uh, in the 1990s. Nearly a million Soviet, uh, former Soviet Jews came here and, and transformed Israel. This will be even bigger. This will be the best generation we've known uh, since the 1948 War of Independence. It's a, a generation that has fought for months in conditions that even I, as an old combat soldier, uh, never experienced, you know, 24-7 combat in the worst possible conditions. They are tough. They are anything but fragile. They're patriotic. They're committed to the country. Oh, my. And in you know, 10, 15 years, they're going to be the prime ministers, if not, if not earlier. And it's a good thing. I'm very optimistic about it. I must tell you. 
I must tell everyone to go to get clarity, Dr. Michael Oren's Substack, and I hope you will start a podcast sometime, Dr. Oren, because there isn't enough really Ooh. good news. From I get the the short stuff from the Times of Israel and David Horowitz hates Netanyahu so much. Sometimes it goes off the rails. But does anyone ever say to you, "Let's sit down and do an hour a day"? Because I could use that every day. We, we have we have several on the can. They're coming out any day now. Okay, <laughs> it's okay. called Clarity too. The podcast oh. called Clarity. Oh, very Thank good. You. Please release them. I will will follow it. Thank you, Dr. Michael Oren. Thank you. Thank you all. Take care. Bye.